Monique, the work from home mogul here, and we're going to end 2020 strong in our businesses to start 2021 strong. So we'll talk about that today and take some comments from No Nona. Stay with us for end of the year success. You might be thinking, all right, 2020 is a wash. Let me just scratch the end of the year and start fresh in 2021. But how you finish the year will actually set up how next year is going to go. So there's some five key things that you need to keep in mind. And we went over holiday sales strategy in my other video. And although that is a good chunk of revenue that you could miss out on, do not mistake that for what you need to do to set up next year strong. Assess how did the year go? Now, for most of us, it was smooth sailing until a global pandemic came out of nowhere. Going back through your expenses and income, what visibility that you had, social media, engagement, anything that really went well. You wanna go back through the months and highlight which ones went best. And if you can even go in through the which ones were your best weeks and were your best days. And this is gonna help you for setting up your budget, it's gonna help you for doing your taxes, it's gonna help you to see what went well and what didn't so that you can do better. So now that you've assessed the year, you can forecast. And let me mention, it doesn't matter if you've got two months left of the year, two weeks, or even 24 hours, you can forecast, write down what you're thankful for from what has happened in 2020. Any accomplishment, anything that you got done, anything that you are proud of, any success that you had, you wanna write down what went well and what was great for at least five minutes. Once you get that out of the way, you can then write for another five minutes about how you want the end of the year to go and 2021. You know, the first couple of minutes, it's like, okay, this is easy. And then you start to see what comes out in the next three minutes and so on. It could be just repeating what success happened from the past or expanding on it, visualizing what do you want to see, what you want your business to look like. And by the way, if you're like, okay, I don't have 15 minutes to do this. I've got four kids. It is great to do it all at once, but you could do five minutes here, take a bathroom break, do another five minutes. If you're splitting it up, just make sure to go back and read what you wrote before, before going into the next step. Taking it even a step further, you want to put pictures with this, which you can make a Pinterest board or you can make a physical vision board. What you wanna see, it's written, and now you can make it visual, and this is something that you can look at over the next coming weeks to the end of the year and then into the new year. You've got all the ideas written and out of your head. You've got the visuals to go with it. Everybody's plan is going to be different of what they want to get done by the end of the year, but it's usually going to include some social media. So go ahead and set a block of time to content create. How many emails are you going to send? What are those emails? How many social media posts on what platforms? What does that look like? Because sometimes you could be scrambling. Okay, I got a post today. I got an email today, but it's going to set yourself up for success. So you don't have to worry about it and be scrambling. Having a call to action is also very important. Yes, you're putting all these images and all these cool things out there about what you're doing, but what is the result that you want from it? Email signups, transactions, people signing up for things, people coming to events. What are you giving out and what is coming back? And in terms of giving, there's always going to be a transaction what you give and what is coming back. So think about that no matter what you're doing. It's a good idea to have a launch. And this could be a launch at the beginning of the year, or you can even think about doing this quarterly as you are planning your whole next year. The reason is because it's exciting. It gives people a reason to keep looking at you. If you're just doing the same thing every single week, every single month, you're not on the leading edge. 
you're just kind of just stuck in one place and no one's excited about that. If you have something cool to look forward to, something interesting that's happening, not all the time, but every once in a while, it's like, oh, let me pay attention to this. Because people have really short attention spans. They could be like, hey, Monique, in an hour, I'm doing this cool Zoom thing. And I'm like, sign me up. I'm totally there. And then one hour later, oh, yeah, you had that Zoom thing. Totally forgot. You want to be in front of people and have visibility, something exciting for them to see that they're not expecting. And if you're like, by the way, I've got four kids and I've already got the YouTube and the podcast and the newsletters and X, Y, Z. Yeah, you. that doesn't mean that just because you're adding something new that it needs to stay there the entire year. It could be just a cool Zoom event that's just happening for Valentine's Day, for example. Leading up to this launch, you want 10 days of interesting content that includes the date of when this is happening. And then once it's launched, another 10 days of the promotion of what's going on or even a recap if it's an event that already happened. Most times the goal is very transactional and very about like, where's the money, which you cannot always predict. What you can predict are numbers. For example, if your conversion rate is 2%, you know that you're gonna get two out of every 100 that come to your website. If you know that out of every 10 phone calls, you get two appointments, you know how many phone calls you need to make to make the appointments. So this is where the actual number planning needs to come in if you in fact have a monetary goal. And if it's about just gaining visibility, then you also can determine how many posts and how much engagement and how many people that you reach out to to get your brand awareness out there. And it is completely doable to have a number and break that down per day, per week, per month, and end the year strong. All right, now we're gonna get some feedback from No Nona. Well, just a few notes. I would say that before writing out what you want to happen, that you wouldn't go through your finances and see the disaster of what expenses and income is not coming in. I would write down what I'd like to happen, but then write down what I know will happen and then look at my finances. If you had a great sales day, if you had a great week, a great month, there's no reason why you cannot recreate that. It is completely possible to do it again and even do it better. As far as forecasting, I don't think that it is a great idea to go out there and spend money on things that you don't know what's gonna happen. I've seen a guy with all types of hopes and dreams get tons of inventory before the end of the year, and now he's up to his eyeballs in hoverboards and fidget spinners. If you are concerned about inventory, you can always do gift cards or a digital deliverable. I do believe in planning ahead, but really planning for the worst. Like, is this the right time to have a business when everything is going to hell? It sounds like you have nowhere to go but up. Plan for the worst, guys. Let's hear what you're doing for the end of this year or your plans for next year in the comments below. Subscribe, turn on that notification bell for next week's video.